I have regularly been hearing these same four concerns over and over from people who want to become ethical hackers in 2023. So let's go ahead and talk about these four different concerns. Number one, there is a lot of concern out there that the artificial intelligence scene is going to erase penetration testing and software development altogether. And I just really don't see this happening. Last week, I spent a little bit of time messing around with chat GTP, asking for different lines of code for projects that I was working working on. And I would say probably 60% of the time it was giving me vulnerable code. And this code was not just vulnerable to one type of vulnerability. It was giving me code that was vulnerable to multiple different types of vulnerabilities. And the most common that it was giving me was cross-site scripting and SQL injection. Finally, I got tired of it giving me vulnerable code. So I just asked it, why are you giving me vulnerable code? It apologized to me and it explained it did not mean to give me vulnerable code, but it just was. If anything, the artificial intelligence at its current state is going to make things a lot easier for penetration testers and bug bounty hunters, especially if software developers or new software developers are going to be using it because they might not know what code is vulnerable and they're going to be a lot less familiar with programming if they're just asking some kind of AI to give them code and they just automatically implement it. So I'm not really concerned at this point about the artificial intelligence taking over the world of cybersecurity. If anything, it is going to make the world more vulnerable on the internet because the information that it has been trained on is not filtering out vulnerable code from non-vulnerable code. Concern number two is why should I learn ethical hacking in 2023? There are several reasons for this. Number one, the field of cybersecurity is continuing to grow. As long as the media is going to be pushing out different hacks or phishing jobs that are happening to major celebrities or large companies, there are going to be people out there that are very concerned about security, whether it's a small business or a large business, they're going to be concerned about security. And as long as the media just keeps on pushing out that hackers are able to access everything, there's going to be this massive interest in cybersecurity, which is going to cause the field to grow, which is going to give you plenty of opportunity to become a penetration tester or to continue working on the side as a bug bounty hunter. So the field is not going to shrink. In fact, I think it's going to continue growing. Also, you can treat cybersecurity as a hobby. You can play CTFs, you can do competitions, and this makes learning a lot more fun. And if you're just learning for fun, then that's okay too. It is a good skill to have. And the last reason why you should learn cybersecurity in 2023 is it leads to a side hustle. Even if you're not doing this as a full-time career, you can do bug bounties just for fun and try to make some money or just do bug bounties for fun just to see how programs are functioning and how they work. And you'll be able to continue learning in the world of cybersecurity as well as software development and just how the online web applications work, which is just interesting and fun in and of itself. This leads us into concern number three. A lot of people ask me about side hustles. What kind of side hustles can I find and what kind of side hustles can I do with cybersecurity? And let's go through a couple of these. And a lot of these will go in order. Like if you start out tutoring, which is how I started out, I started out tutoring in software development, which then led into tutoring in cybersecurity. And then once those college kids go out and they graduate, and they get jobs and they're working for companies and they run into a problem, you know who they come back to, the person that helped them in the past. And then they will reach out to me or to the person who is tutoring them and they'll say, hey, can you consult on this project? And so tutoring is side hustle number one. And then consulting becomes side hustle number two. Because you had helped these college students in the past, they will reach back out to you and say, can you help consult on this project? My company has given me the okay to bring in an outsider. And as you are consulting, you'll be able to bring in additional income. But then once you're done consulting, usually what will happen is you will be able to start freelancing. People will contact you and say, hey, instead of just consulting and telling us how you would do this project or how you would do this penetration test, will you just do it? And then you become a freelancer. So this is kind of how things worked for me. It started out as tutoring, which is not just a good way to make side money, but you're also able to learn a ton, especially if you're helping people in software development or cybersecurity, really both of them. Because when you help people, even if you're not in those classes, you have to do those assignments and you have to read over those syllabuses and understand what is happening. So tutoring is going to really help you learn and it is going to be a nice little side hustle, which leads to freelancing. And in every one of these situations, you'll be able to make a little bit of money as you are progressing towards your full-time career in cybersecurity. And really, you can do the same thing in software development. The final concern people give me probably the most is that they don't want to start because 
because they're already behind. And that is true. If you're starting right now, you're going to be behind somebody who started a year ago or two years ago or five years ago. And so people will say, why should I even start? I'm already so far behind. I'm never going to catch up. I, as a competitive person, look at this kind of like a competition. It's like, okay, they've already started. They've got a head start. I'm going to go ahead and get started and I'm going to work twice as hard, read twice as much, practice twice as much in order to catch up. And so I kind of view things as a competition, which really helps me keep on going and keeps me motivated but i know that that's not there for everybody so you have to set different kinds of goals that are realistic for you and i know one of the ones that helps people the most is if you set a goal that's a year out so it's like okay i don't know anything i'm very far behind i need to set up my plan my roadmap whatever start doing that because once you make the transition into the full-time cybersecurity or programming or whatever it is you want to do it's going to be very exciting and you're going to have those great feelings of accomplishment and it's something that you should definitely go for as for being behind you don't have to worry about being behind you're always going to be behind i'm behind everybody is going to be behind somebody else in every area of cybersecurity. I will never be the best at SQL injection. I'll never be the best at cross-site scripting. I'm never going to be the best at privilege escalation. And that's okay. There are always going to be those people who are specialized in web applications and they're just going to be really good. And maybe that's going to be you. Maybe you want to work just on web applications or just on network penetration testing. And you can become really good in one area, but just know you're never going to be the best at all of them. I kind of like to follow the path of just being like the jack of all trades, know a little bit of web applications, a little bit of network penetration testing. And so I just kind of like to bounce around because that fits me and my personality. I don't want to spend all of my time just on one thing. I want to be really well-rounded, which means I'm never going to be the best at any of them. And I'm okay with that, but I don't just stop and say, you know what? There are people ahead of me. I'm just going to call it good because I'm already behind. I'd rather look at it as I'm going to continue growing and continue learning and I'm going to continue bettering myself. And you have to be okay with not being the best. You have to have realistic goals. Like what is it that you want to accomplish? Do you want to just make a full-time living as a penetration tester, a bug bounty hunter, or would you like to do malware analysis? It's whatever it is, set those goals and then reach them and then continue getting better. And it's okay to not be the best. When you start out and you think I'm behind, I'm never going to catch up. That's not necessarily true. The learning curve in the world of cybersecurity is really, really steep. So it kind of goes like this. If you think about it on a graph or a chart, it's going to go very, very flat, very, very flat. And then as things start to click, you're just going to automatically start shooting up and you can become really proficient within a year. So don't worry about being behind. Just keep on going, keep on moving forward and just get started. Know that eventually you will be good enough to make it as a bug bounty hunter or a penetration tester or whatever your goals are leading you to do. It's okay to think I'm behind now, but in the future, I'm going to catch up to some people and maybe even you'll have a knack for it and you can catch up to some of those top guys everybody had to start somewhere so just go ahead and get started and don't worry about being behind just focus on yourself and getting better every single day thanks for watching